What up YouTube, it's Arvanite and I've got something to say. Okay guys, I've got an Alienware 15R3 in my possession which I will be reviewing for you today under four different categories starting with purchase, shipment experience, unboxing and then usability or the performance of the laptop. So the purchase experience was relatively the same across the board with anything else you would order online. Um, you go to the Dell website, you specify what you want, you slap in your credit card, fish, bash, bosh, done. Um, I did it slightly different. I did a bit of research. There's four different categories of the Alienware 15R3, which is the very bad, the okay, good, and then the very good. Um, I went for the good. Um, and I changed the 8 gig to 16 gig at 2400 MHz clock speed and that bumped up the price from 1600 to 1790 um, and this is great British pounds and uh, rather than actually ordering online I spoke to a salesperson who gave me a discount for 190 pounds so pro tip if you ever want to buy something from a corporate company do not buy it directly from the website get in touch with their sales team they will guarantee to give you a discount so I had a quite interesting experience with the shipment from Dell. Um, I placed the order before Easter. I had absolutely no idea whether or not the delivery services would be working during Easter. Um, only to find out that every Alienware order made to Dell were actually made to order. So they would have to manufacture your Alienware overseas and then ship it over to your country. Um, which was surprising because then I understood why the ETA was actually for 14 days. The estimated time of shipment, delivery, arrival, whatever you want to call it, was actually 14 days. This was not acceptable to me. I phoned up customer services and I said, hey, Dell is huge, you've got to do something about this. You know, I don't care what you do, but you know, I can't have 14 days for this to for, for this to be shipped. So what they did was they were quite nice. They said, you know, we'll get in touch with our colleagues in China, speed, speed up the sort of manufacturing process for it, and then ship it over, etc. And I said, yeah, fantastic, great. So they supplied me with the tracking URL for the shipment from China to the UK, um, which had three statuses. The last status was shipped, and that all took five days, but it didn't change. Um, once it actually got to the UK, the UK Mail, the national delivery service, um, took over and they sent over a tracking uh, URL of their own which is more realistic because what they do is they do real-time updates so they'll tell you exactly when it's in the warehouse, when it's left the warehouse, when it's in the van, when it's out for delivery, that, all that sort of stuff, right? So you can actually keep track of your package um, but they're also uh, really good with this because they give you a time slot of when they'll be in to deliver your um, uh, uh, package mine was around 11.30, 12.30 midday and um, the guy showed up exactly at 11.30 with my package. So that was my sort of shipment experience with Dell. Um, I think it was pretty good, even though 14 days isn't you know, acceptable, but I got mine within a week, so thumbs up. The unboxing of the Alienware was very pleasant. Um, you have this very sort of squared box, um, which is quite well designed. It's got the Alien logo in the front, Alien logo in the back. It's got sort of number 15, as in the 15 inch of the laptop with the layout of the laptop on the side. And on the other side, it's got the Intel logo, and um, it's quite well designed. It's got a really nice texture and feel to it, and you can see that you know it's actually you know the laptop inside is actually protected, right? So I know it's going to sort of ship all the way from China to the UK, and it's going to go through a different hand, and it's going to be thrown uh, here and there. But they they you know with the foam inside, with the protective casing, etc., all that sort of stuff that's inside is actually really really well. Um, placed. So once you actually open up the case, it's like a treasure chest, right? So as soon as you open it, it's like, ta-da! Like, you know, you get this beam of light from, uh, from, from, the, from, from the box itself. Um, no, you don't get a beam of light, I'm just, you know, saying that. But you get the point, right? Um, you've got this nice little sort of new laptop smell coming out of it as soon as you open it up, which probably is a plastic manufacturer's uh, debris inside that you should not inhale at any given point um, and then you have sort of the power supply on the on right in the edge of it and then you have a bit of marketing material as well um, and the laptop is just sitting right in the middle and it's nicely protected by the foam around it so I think the unboxing is, uh, is, a, is a very sort of pleasant uh, experience actually so thumbs up for that as well 
The outer of the laptop is actually very beautifully designed. Um, it's very robust, so you can actually, you know, you can feel it's a bit heavy. It's like four kilograms heavy, but it's actually um, very sort of sturdy. It's, it's, you know, your keyboard, there is no flex on the keyboard. There's no flex on the trackpad. Um, you know, the, the screen sort of tilting back and forth is very, very well done. Um, and then all around you have the LED lights, which give it a really nice feel. I think it's like the UFO of laptops, but it's awesome to have it at home. Um, you can sort of switch the lights to different colors. Um, you can switch them up if you want. Um, but I think they look really, really nice, especially if you combine them with the lights on the keyboard, the alien logo in the front, and uh, the alien logo sort of at the back of the screen. Um, and also the trackpad lights uh, lights up to the same color as well, so you can have this you know uh, unified uh, color of, uh, in, in your laptop, which is um, which is which is really really cool actually. It looks really really good. Um, you can tell that you know. Alienware have kept and stuck to their name, <laughs> um, but um, it's it, I think it's really well done actually, um, especially when you place your arm or your sort of wrist on the uh, on the laptop to sort of type on the keyboard. It's actually really uh, really comfortable. Um, I think the layout of the keyboard is also good. Um, you have the macro keys on the left hand side, which I sometimes hit the um, the button, which is the macro key top left micro key um, instead of the escape and that all it does is really changes the profile of the macro macro keys uh, but it's slightly annoying because you know, you know you always know or think that escape is in the top left rather than anything else but there's now a macro key profile changer key um, so I think it's it's really cool it's got you know so the power option is uh, sort of the, the power button is the alien head itself, it changes color every time. Um, I'm not too sure how and why it changes color, but um, I've seen it sort of go rainbowy and it looks pretty cool, um, especially if you have your lights on as well on the keyboard and everywhere else. So it, um, it really gives it that you know, finishing touch as to this. Now, the, 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 the worry of, in, that I had the, sort of in the beginning was actually the bezel screen. Um, but you, you, you know, you, the screen is so beautiful, you forget about the bezel. Um, it's just, you know, it doesn't bother you. It, the screen is just awesome. Like I've never seen any, anything like this before. Um, this is, it, you know, the blacks are black, the whites are white. Uh, you know, the, the RGBs are the RGBs. It's this really, really crisp. It's really nice, actually. I mean, you can sort of see it from all the sides, etc. Um, so it's an IPS panel. So, which is which is awesome. So that's um, that's that's sort of the outer of the Alienware. Now we'll talk about sort of the ports aspect of it. Which the right input output port is just a lone USB 3.0 port. While on the left you'll find the headphone jack, a microphone jack, a USB 3.0 port, USB 3.1 Type C port, and a Noble lock. On the back you'll find a gigabit Ethernet port, a mini display port, an HDMI 2.0 port, a Thunderbolt over USB Type C, and the proprietary Alienware graphics amplifier port. On the bottom, there is a large exhaust vent extending the length of the removable bottom panel, beyond which you can see the Alienware's 15s cooling system. The Alienware's overall build is incredibly solid and offers virtually no flex in this area. The Alienware 15R3 scored 3105 on the 3D mark. So in this video, what you're actually seeing is me playing through Witcher 3 um, or on Ultra settings. I'll show you the settings at the end of the game. Um, I have selected Ultra and there are some that are not selected but this is due because uh, the graphic card or does not sort of support some of the um, some, some of the things that Witcher 3 has. So you get to see some aspects of how the game actually performs under stress as it is being also recorded and it does have everything in Ultra so if you do see any hiccups you know why. So what I was looking for was for three things. Um, one was portability to carry around with me. Of course, not a desktop, that's not gonna help. Um, then I was actually looking for a gaming laptop, either an Alienware, Razorblade, MSI, or a Aorus. And the third was actually 
not so much gaming because I also want it for work when I go to the offices and meet other people, clients, etc. I don't want to whip out a full on gaming laptop. I know the Alienware's got lights all over the place, but it, you know, it's not all gaming gaming. It's actually got a really nice sleek sort of uh, design, so it doesn't give out it, it doesn't give out too much. So, um, but, but there's uh, obviously two issues that I face with this laptop. One is a known issue to Dell, and it's with the hard drives that I have in place. My hard drive is a SATA at 7200 RPM. It's a Hitachi brand. It's one terabyte and it's six gigabits per second. The day that I bought the laptop, and so the day that I got the laptop, I put, you know, sort of turned it on, etc. And I noticed it's very, very slow. Like, you know, and I thought, hold on, it's supposed to be a gaming laptop. What the hell's going on? So I started looking into it, sort of researching. Well, the first thing that you do really is open up Task Manager. Based on that, uh, you sort of see the processes, and then if you're not satisfied, you open up the Resource Manager and you know, dig deeper and deeper and deeper. It's like, you know, how far does the rabbit hole really go? Well, we're about to find out. So. I looked at sort of you know what's really eating up everything, um, you know, causing this sort of system lag, and it was 100% disk usage across the whole time. So, you know, you would use applications as normally, but you would get 100% disk usage constantly, right? So no, it it doesn't really matter what you you were doing, whether you were using the computer or where you. You know, if you weren't even using it, if it was just idle, it will still be 100%. So, first thing is to disable everything in startup, reboot, do that, it doesn't work. Then you start following guides online which say, you know, you disable super fetch and disable Windows search and, you know, disable prefetch on Google Chrome and all that sort of stuff. And none of that works. I'm like, I guarantee you, you know, that, that sort of stuff. Not with this laptop, anyways. So after digging deeper and reinstalling Windows and reinstalling apps and reinstalling updates and all that sort of stuff and going through back and forth with this for two days and not being able to post any videos whatsoever online because of this, um, I decided to phone up Dell, you know, not that I haven't done it before, I've done it before, but they just gave me an answer which was really silly. It was like, yeah, you have to wait until the laptop stabilizes because it's installing a lot of updates. That's why you're having 100% disk usage. Go figure. Um, so I decided to phone them again, right? So this time around, I actually got through to some really, really clever guy. And as soon as I mentioned 100% disk usage, he knew exactly what was uh, what was going on. He asked me if I was able to actually uh, sort of open the laptop myself, and he will direct me and tell me what to do. So I said, yeah, sure. I said, get a screwdriver. And I said, yep, fantastic. So I turned over the laptop, unscrewed six screws on there, opened up the, um, the back. He said, sort of disconnect the power. So I did. Remove the hard drive. I did. Remove the RAM. I did. And he said, now there's two copper points in there which you need to press and hold for 15 seconds with a screwdriver. So I did. I was holding it there for 15 seconds, and 15 seconds later, told me to let go, put the RAM back in, put the hard drive back in, put the lid, screw everything on, turn it around, and turn it back on. The moment I did that, that was or is the way to reset the CMOS and the complete motherboard on the laptop for Dell. So that pretty much just reset everything on the, on the hardware side. And when I rebooted, it asked me for date and time and everything else because it had no idea what was going on. So, you know, I set all that up and then hit continue. And then, the, you know, as soon as it loaded into Windows, it was 100%. And it said 100% disk usage, but for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, it dropped and it just constantly was 1%, 2%, 1%, 2%, 1%, 2%, which is. Which is normal, right? Unless you start doing really heavy stuff, then it sort of jumps to 10%, 15%, 20%, but never 100 If it goes to 100 there's something really, really wrong with this. So that was issue number one. Issue number two, because I've installed so many versions of the Windows, all my drivers and all the software were all over the place. I was about to say something else, but all over the place, right? So 
now I had to bring everything together, right? So I had to create a recovery disk and I have to sort of you know, get a USB drive for it and all that sort of stuff and then sort of re redo it, right? It took me like four or five hours to do that. So finally now, thank God, I've actually got everything running and it's running perfect. Just the way that I want it. It's running fast, it's running smooth, there's no hiccups, there's no system lag. I've got two screens connected to this. Awesome, I love it. It's um, it's my it's my ideal laptop. I think you know my choice for this was really really good actually. I think you know this is probably the only choice of laptops that I've purchased in my life that I have no you know, I have not regret regretted as of yet. And I hope you know, fingers crossed I haven't regret it. But this is awesome. So I am really really happy with this laptop actually. Um, it's it's really sort of you know. It's met my expectations. I set pretty high expectations going for a £1,600 laptop. I thought, you know, I should, I better get something really, really good out of it. But you know, Alienware has actually proved me to be, uh, to be, to be kind to me after all those things. I mean, I forgive Alienware for all the issues, etc. That's all past. We're best friends now, so um, we can we can move on. But um, yeah, so that's. Um, that's why I wanted to really sort of just cover in this uh, in this video because I think some of the reviews that I'm seeing online it's interesting because obviously they're either one sponsored so they get through the video for 10 minutes talk about everything about the laptop but you don't really actually get a personal review of it you just get a paid review if that makes any sense um, others who are doing reviews um, like non-sponsored reviews they pretty much follow the lead to the sponsored reviews and try to do it that way around. I took a different approach. As you can see, I'm talking to you. So this is sort of on a personal level. Um, so yeah, that's, um, so, but I mean, you know, I'm happy to hear your guys sort of comments and uh, sort of ideas, etc. just to let me know what sort of laptops you guys have, what specs. And um, I, it, it'll, be, it'll be great to know if there was anything wrong that I got around on the video when I was actually carrying out the review. So I'd love to you know, to sort of collaborate with you guys and get my my facts right if I have got them wrong, um, but also to see what you guys um, have as a gaming laptop. I love mine and I hope you love yours. And this is uh, this is this is this is all for me from for today, guys. And I uh, hope to uh, to create another video very soon. So smash that like button, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank <laughs> you.